Have you ever wondered how to start a successful meditation practice? Well, meet Dr. Bhante Saranapala, who is fondly known as the Urban Monk. As a meditation teacher and the founder of Canada, a mindful and kind nation, he brings a fresh perspective to understanding meditation. Meditation, according to Dr. Saranapala, is not just a leisurely pastime or a quick stress relief tool, but a form of inner work. It demands consistency, dedication, and a willingness to delve into the depths of one's consciousness. It's about setting aside a few moments of quiet introspection each day, creating a space to connect with your inner self. Now, let's take a dive into some important advice from Dr. Saranapala on starting your meditation journey. Getting started is often the hardest part of any journey. This holds true even for meditation, a journey that takes place within the confines of our mind. As we step into this realm, let's heed the advice of Dr. Bhante Saranapala, affectionately known as the Urban Monk. He's a firm believer in the power of consistent practice and recommends a starting point of 15 minutes daily. Now you might wonder, just 15 minutes? Yes indeed. The beauty of meditation lies not in the duration, but in the consistency. It's akin to watering a plant. A little each day goes a long way in nurturing it, helping it grow and bloom. Similarly, a daily dose of meditation, no matter how small, helps nourish our mind, fostering mindfulness and serenity. Dr. Saranapala also suggests gradually increasing the duration of your practice. As you grow more comfortable and experienced, you'll start to notice the subtle shifts within you. You'll find yourself more patient, more present, and more at peace. And as these changes occur, you might find yourself naturally extending your practice time, deepening your journey within. However, it's essential to remember not to rush or force it. Meditation is not a race. It's a journey to be savored. It's about connecting with yourself, understanding your thoughts, and gaining control over them. It's about learning to be comfortable in the silence, letting the mind rest, and just being. So, as you embark on your meditation journey, take it one day at a time. Start with 15 minutes, and gradually build from there. Be patient with yourself, and remember, it's not about how long you meditate, but rather, how consistent you are. Stick with it, and soon you'll start to see the profound impact of this simple practice on your life. Remember, it's not about how long you meditate, but rather, how consistent you are. Meditation is not always a serene journey. Indeed, it often takes us through the tumultuous waters of our own inner world, a realm filled with emotions, memories, and thoughts that we often prefer to keep hidden. But according to Dr. Bhante Saranapala, known as the Urban Monk, it is precisely these elements that we must face during meditation. When we sit down to meditate, we give ourselves an opportunity to confront our pain and emotions, to delve into our own psyche, and to explore what lies beneath the surface. We may encounter feelings of sadness, anger, fear, or anxiety. These emotions may be related to past events or present circumstances, and they may be uncomfortable or even painful to face. But it is important to remember that this is a natural part of the process. In meditation we are not seeking to suppress or ignore these emotions, instead we learn to observe them, to acknowledge their presence without judgment. We begin to see our thoughts and emotions as they truly are, fleeting and impermanent. They come, they go, and they do not define us. This perspective can be incredibly liberating. Letting go of negative thoughts is another crucial aspect of this process. As we meditate we may find ourselves caught up in a whirlwind of negativity. But rather than getting swept away, we learn to let these thoughts pass by, like leaves floating down a stream. We don't cling to them or let them pull us under, instead, we observe them, acknowledge them, and then let them go. This is what it means to achieve a state of mindfulness. It is a state of open awareness in which we are fully present and engaged with our experiences, but not overwhelmed by them. We are able to observe our thoughts and emotions without becoming entangled in them. We are able to face our pain without letting it consume us. Meditation asks us to face our inner selves no matter how uncomfortable that may be. It invites us to confront our pain and emotions, to observe our thoughts and let them go. And in doing so, it offers us the chance to find peace, understanding, and liberation. Mindfulness is the key to successful meditation. This statement serves as a beacon, guiding us through the intricacies of meditation. One of the guiding lights in this journey is Dr. Bhante Saranapala, known as the Urban Monk. He defines mindfulness in terms of four pillars, prevention, elimination, cultivation, and maintenance. Prevention is the first of these pillars. It is about being aware of our thoughts, emotions, and actions in the present moment. 
and preventing the onset of negative patterns. This might mean recognizing when stress is starting to build and taking steps to calm the mind before it escalates. Next, we have elimination, which involves letting go of negative thoughts and emotions that have already taken root. This is where we learn to face our pain and discomfort, rather than running away from them. It's about acknowledging these feelings, understanding their transient nature, and allowing them to pass without clinging on to them. The third pillar, cultivation, is about nurturing positive thoughts and emotions. It's about actively seeking out joy, peace, and contentment in our everyday experiences and allowing these feelings to grow within us. It's about fostering a sense of compassion for ourselves and others and nurturing an attitude of gratitude for the simple things in life. Finally, the fourth pillar, maintenance, is about sustaining these positive mental states over time. It's about making mindfulness a habit, something that we practice every day, no matter how we're feeling. It's about consistency and persistence, and understanding that every moment is a new opportunity to be mindful. These four pillars, prevention, elimination, cultivation, and maintenance, serve as a roadmap to mindfulness. They're not meant to be rigid rules, but rather guidelines that can be adapted to our own unique circumstances. Each pillar supports and strengthens the others, creating a sturdy foundation for a successful meditation practice. Mindfulness is a skill that can be honed with practice, and these four pillars provide a strong foundation. As we continue to cultivate mindfulness, we'll find that it becomes a natural part of our lives, helping us to navigate the ups and downs with grace and resilience. Compassion and kindness start with the self. In our journey through meditation, we've spoken about the importance of facing our emotions, observing and letting go of negative thoughts, and the four pillars of mindfulness. But there's one crucial aspect we haven't explored yet, the power of self-kindness. Dr. Bhante Saranapala, the urban monk, places a high emphasis on self-kindness and compassion in meditation. He believes that by treating ourselves with kindness, we can create a nurturing environment for our minds, and this in turn can pave the way for healing and growth, but what does self-kindness look like in practice? It's about recognizing our own feelings, acknowledging our pain and discomfort and not being too hard on ourselves. It's about understanding that it's okay to have bad days, and it's okay to not feel okay. It's about giving ourselves the same understanding and compassion that we would give to a close friend, and this is where meditation becomes a powerful tool. Through meditation we can cultivate an attitude of self-kindness, we can learn to observe our thoughts and emotions without judgment, acknowledging them as they are, and letting them go with compassion. Dr. Saranapala believes that this act of self-kindness can alleviate suffering. It's like applying a soothing balm to our wounds, helping us heal from within. It's about creating a safe space within ourselves where we can confront our fears and insecurities and transform them into strength and resilience. This act of self-kindness is not just beneficial for ourselves but it also radiates outwards. When we are kind to ourselves we become more capable of extending that kindness to others. It's a ripple effect that can spread positivity and compassion. It's important to remember that like any other skill, self-kindness requires practice. It won't happen overnight but with patience and persistence it can become a part of who we are. Remember the journey to a successful meditation practice starts and ends with you. We've journeyed through some important advice from Dr. Saranapala on starting a successful meditation practice. Let's recap. Firstly, meditation is inner work and demands consistent practice. Just as a plant needs regular water and sunlight to grow, your mindfulness needs daily nourishment. Start small with 15 minutes a day and gradually increase your duration. Secondly, don't shy away from your pain and emotions. Embrace them. They are not your enemies, but gateways to your inner self. Thirdly, remember the four pillars of mindfulness, prevention, elimination, cultivation, and maintenance. These are not just steps but a cyclical process to develop a mindful life. Lastly, practice self-kindness. Be gentle with yourself. It's not about achieving perfection but about embracing your imperfections with love and compassion. So, take a deep breath, set your intention, and embark on this beautiful journey of self-exploration. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates on mental health at Glee Glow Junction. We're dedicated to keeping you informed and empowered. Take care, and remember, together we can build a supportive and resilient community. Stay tuned for the next Glee Glow Junction.